Hello and welcome to the Battle Royale. I am your host Greggles and we are going to be taking a look at the Sun Belt, otherwise known as the Fun Belt Conference. This is going to be a 10 team conference, so this one should be a little bit shorter than the last one in the SEC. Uh, thank you for the welcome back. Um, all right, let's get started. I'll introduce the teams while we go through the first 80 or so, or 50 to 80 turns and we start seeing interesting things actually happen. So up in the top in Kid Brewer Stadium, we have Appalachian State. And then going clockwise from there in Centennial Bank Stadium, we have Arkansas State. Hopefully they can do a little bit better than Arkansas did. Their uh, in-state rivals, or not rivals, but in-state neighbors. Um, then in Brooks Stadium, we have Coastal Carolina. In Allen E. Paulson Stadium, we have Georgia Southern. And then in Georgia State Stadium, we have Georgia State. Don't want to get those two confused. Uh, in Cajun Field, we have Louisiana, or Louisiana Lafayette. Um, in L Malone Stadium, I almost said Post Malone Stadium, Hi, cat. Hello. In Malone Stadium, we have Louisiana Monroe. Um, in Hancock Whitney Stadium, we have South Alabama. In Bobcat Stadium, we have Texas State. And in Veterans Memorial Stadium, we have Troy. Carl Malone. Hi, what's wrong? My cat's mad at me. He wants to come on my lap. <laughs> I'm busy, boy boy. You want to say hi to everyone? Okay, okay. He's going to say hi to you. All right, so moving on. Um, yeah, like I said, it's a 10-team it's a conference. Hopefully, it'll go a little faster. Um, this is going to be equivalent to the to the Big 12. I think that they're the only other 10-team conference in, in uh, the FBS, so... My cat is just staring angrily at me. He really wants to come on my shoulder. I'm busy right now, bud. I know. <laughs> well, you can come on my shoulder afterwards. How's that sound? Okay. Okay, he's he's not accepting that. We've been together all week. I've been stuck in the house with you for a week, and you just aren't satisfied? No. Okay. All right, so we're at turn 34. <laughs> And um, nothing has happened yet. We've seen some expansions. It looks like uh, Louisiana Monroe is really aggressively moving towards South Alabama. Cat, <laughs> cat versus Battle Royale. The cat will win. The cat will is is determined. If he wants something like attention or food, he will go for it. So he's one of my three cats, and he's easily the most uh, the biggest handful. But I love my little guy. He's great. Um, all right, so it looks like Centennial Bank Stadium, so uh, Arkansas State moving in towards uh, Coastal Carolina, who's also ag aggressively expanding towards uh, Arkansas State, so that works out. Georgia Southern going towards Georgia State, who's going towards Louisiana Lafayette, or yeah, Louisiana Lafayette, so everyone expanding towards each other with a 10-person battle royale. Uh, space is limited, so you're going to see a lot more bumping into each other a lot faster than you would have in the SEC, where there was a lot more teams and a lot more space. So, all right, so moving on, we are on turn about 53 now, and still no units, no great great people yet, so that's not uncommon. We probably will see some in the next few minutes. And yeah, I expect this one to go just pretty much as soon as we start seeing wars, it's just going to cascade war on war on war on war until... There's a winner. That's what I'm expecting. I don't think this one's going to be too much of a standoff like the SEC. <laughs> funding is, I mean, it, you, the group of five has to pay more in general, so I guess funding would be a little bit harder. Do you agree? Is that what you're saying, Kumba? Okay, he's sitting on my wife's chair now. Now he's on her desk. Get off the desk. There's no food up there for you. <laughs> He's on a he's on a mission. He's hunting for something. All right, so I do see a great general in Arkansas State's territory. It looks like App State has a caravan. Um, great general for Texas State. Hello, don't bump the microphone, please. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. You are talkative tonight. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> that's what I'm expecting to hear is the did he actually hit the microphone I didn't think he did 
but he was sneaky. He, he walked over from my wife's desk onto mine, so. All right, so world's busiest people. Texas State is pretty far ahead of everyone else. App State and Coastal Carolina starting to lag behind. Everyone else in a solid eight, so. <laughs> Boy, what's wrong? We had some food in here earlier. I think he's trying to find it. He's calling out for the food. All right, so I see some more great generals starting to show up um, in Texas State, in South Alabama, in Georgia Southern, and so just a matter of time until we see a military unit. Turn 80, they're lagging a bit behind some of the other conferences, but that's okay. It's so small that that's going to ramp up quick. There we go. Louisiana Lafayette is the first team to build a military unit that I can see with that catapult. <laughs> all right there's the first announcement uh i guess they were unhappy with louisiana lafayette having their first military unit so oh I, one of my cats is, is definitely is definitely hefty the one you've been hearing meowing is is actually the skinniest but he eats the most so i don't really know where it all goes so <laughs> there is the next uh but military unit in Malone Stadium with the another catapult. I don't see any more elsewhere yet. And uh, Louisiana Lafayette with their second catapult. All right, I will be right back. One second, I have to sneeze again. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> the cat apologizes as well. So I see some great artists being used in... <laughs> I'm not even allergic. My wife is actually allergic to cats, but she was the one who wanted three. So I guess she's a masochist it's somewhat. <laughs> um, let's see. I, Louisiana Lafayette looking pretty good, but like we've seen before, to um, having the largest military early does not necessarily mean you're going to win. Speaking of cats, Georgia Tech now has Aderhold Cat or Adderhold Cat, which is their unique unit. <laughs> so, so oops click the mini map um that is a melee unit so they can use adderhold cat to capture cities but they need that's i think the first time i've seen a team not build a catapult first unless that is a catapult replacement nope it's a swordsman and the adderhold cat's gone it is now upgraded to a swordsman but we saw one cat quickly appear and then disappear and my cat just left the room, so now we should be a little bit more quiet going forward for a while. Alright, so Louisiana Monroe also has that catapult. I think they had it before, and I just realized it again. Um, nothing else yet. We're at turn 112. I'm going to guess around turn <clears throat> 175 we'll see a war. Hopefully before that, but you never know. And I see Troy now has their own... Um, catapult app state still has no mil uh, military yet uh, coastal Carolina has a catapult uh, Texas State Georgia Southern uh, South Alabama and Arkansas State with no military units yet but that is okay again you can be a little bit late to the party but as long as you strategize it well you're okay I mean we've seen some crazy things happen throughout this battle royale so the Mac was another one where a team who took the longest to come to a war finally built a military, used it to snipe a city, and then went on to win the game. So, crazy here things have happened, and it's not about who builds it first, but who uses it best. <laughs> and there is some innuendo in there, and I'll let you guys make that one yourselves. <laughs> Alright, Coastal Carolina has their catapult, or second catapult, ready to go. Uh, Troy has their second catapult. Let's see if we see some joint wars between two stronger teams that are straddling a weaker team. There's the third catapult for Troy. So they're moving along really fast. Um, Texas State's still lagging behind. App State's still not doing anything militarily yet, but that's okay. Uh, Georgia Southern as well. Still lagging behind militarily. So we're down to what? Four teams that don't have a uh, military unit yet. 
Coastal Carolina has their Chauncey, the um, Chanticleer. And that'll help them out a bit in the war, especially because they are focusing on military expansion. Troy now has a melee unit. So these all can... Uh, South, or Coastal Carolina, Troy, and Georgia Southern, or Georgia State all have the ability to capture cities. Georgia State less so because they don't actually have other units to back up their swordsmen, but... I wouldn't go to war yet this early with just one melee unit. You probably want around two or three just to be sure that you can capture a city because if they're going to focus entirely on that melee unit. Because if they knock out the one melee unit you have and you don't have a backup, you're not getting that city. There is a second Chauncey, so Coastal Carolina is in a good position. So the question is, who do they go for? They have really good options in both Arkansas State and Georgia Southern uh, to attack. People like to smile the most. Troy, everyone's pretty okay. 12-9. Uh, Louisiana Monroe and Louisiana Lafayette, the lowest at 7. I get it. I have been to Louisiana. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but... Uh, Troy's looking pretty good militarily. Uh, South Alabama's starting to catch up a bit. Uh, still no military for App State, Georgia Southern, uh, or Texas State. Or Arkansas State. Yeah, they don't have one either. I saw that great general. Thought it was a different unit. There's our first war. So there we go. Troy and South Alabama are going to declare war against Texas State. And um, both teams have decent military. South Alabama does now have a swordsman, so they didn't at first, but they can now capture a city. Will they fully commit to this war? Who knows? Uh, Troy, unfortunately, has this water tile that they're going to have to either go through or around. I would recommend around, because if you're sitting in water, you are more, as a land unit, you are more vulnerable to attack than you would be on land. So it's a lot easier to sink a unit that's not supposed to be on the water. Uh, so if they do... Um, embark units into that lake they are going to be in a lot of trouble so Troy kind of sending in one pikeman they pull him back out immediately when he realizes he's going in there alone so this war seems to be more of a show of, of you're in trouble if you don't bulk up your military there is finally a composite bowman in Bobcat Stadium so now we're down to three teams who don't have a military Georgia Southern now focusing on trade I don't know what App State, I guess Arkansas State is as well. Don't know what App State's doing. No commitment to this war against Texas State yet. But that could all change very quickly, so. All right, App State, there we go. Now I know what App State's doing. They build the Great Library. As you saw with Mississippi State in the last game, that can really help bring you above a lot of other teams with technologies and that's where you want to shine military militarily that's where you want to shine arkansas state does now build a horseman and buys a composite bowman as well so now it's down to oh and georgia southern now is a horseman so now it's down to app state who does not have any military units whatsoever but with that great library there's they can start focusing on military and research at the same time so when they do get a military it's going to be technologically advanced so not a bad move they just need to make sure that they don't get invaded which is okay i mean you got an aggressive troy next to you but they're focusing on texas state um i do see louisiana monroe built the terracotta army with just a single catapult so now they have a second catapult again a preventative terracotta army like we've seen so nothing new there georgia state getting a great artist that's okay all right my cat's back uh Bobcat, or Texas State does now have Boko, their uh, mascot, and they are launching a small invasion of, of uh, South Alabama, but South Alabama counters right back against them. So that actually may be pushing teams into war. They're going to send a horseman into the water against Louis, or against Troy, and he's going to be immediately bombarded. And that's what I'm saying, where he's in the water, he's going to be a lot weaker than if he was on land. So these two teams not committing to taking a city, but they are making sure Texas State does not really use that military or have a military in any way. So <laughs> good for them just to keep the the Bobcats down there, but not going to get a city that way. Georgia State has built up three catapults. Georgia Southern still happy with just that one horseman. I'm surprised Coastal Carolina hasn't done anything. Arkansas State has really bulked up their military. App State still has not built a military unit. I would have expected them to quickly shift to military after that 
a uh, great library build but no they do have a great general so that may help them but he can't attack so if they get invaded by arkansas state and troy let's say in a joint effort they're gonna be in trouble there's a horseman so they finally have a military unit now they need to work on quickly building more <laughs> so get a lot of military units become a deterrent uh for everyone else who was thinking about invading you if i were coastal carolina i would work together with georgia state to take on georgia southern uh, maybe because Georgia State has that lake there, so they're going to have to go around it kind of like what Troy is facing right now with Texas State. So if I were Coastal Carolina, join the, uh, form a joint war, so that'll distract um, Georgia Southern slightly so you can walk in and take Allen E. Paulson Stadium. So right now this war is the only one we have going on still. Um, neither team really committing to it. It's still early in the game, so it's going to take a lot to actually capture cities. And a lot of teams seem to be kind of hesitant to fight each other. Arkansas State and Coastal Carolina, probably the two largest militaries in the game. Texas State does the smart move and builds the Great Wall, so that's going to protect them in this war for a while. And we've seen a lot of teams with the Great Wall lasting until probably the top three or four. So that's going to be a great spot for Texas State to be in. It's going to be really hard to get to Bobcat Stadium now if you're anybody else. Um, in terms of technologies, Coastal Carolina is above and beyond. App State right there with them, though. That's that great library at work. Um, and down at the bottom, and it's only by one. So everyone's pretty much caught up <clears throat> in terms of technologies. App State hasn't pulled ahead yet. And it's going to be a few turns at least, in, or a few, uh, like an era or two before App State really starts to show that advantage. And you're, if App State can get a second city, that's really going to ramp up quickly. So... With one city, it's still pretty even, but with two, they can just go nuts with it. So, Or whoever gets App State. If anyone captures App State, they get that great library, and they will have two cities, so they can really start to take that scientific advantage. Um, everyone else starting to build up militaries. Here we go. Here's the war. Georgia State and Louisiana Monroe against Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, the Raging Cajuns just haven't really focused on military much at all. Louisiana Monroe has a decent one, but Georgia State has a pretty sizable military force. Coastal Carolina looks grouped up, so we may see a war with them soon. Against two, I don't know. That could just be they're running out of room as well, though. So, All right, so it looks like Georgia State's letting Louisiana Monroe deal with the Louisiana Lafayette Army before they themselves are going to invade and try to take that city. They have that lake there, which is going to be a deterrent, but they can go around it. I mean, there's still room. They can go this way or send the one tile through there. So they're doing the right thing, sending the trebuchets and <clears throat> and um, city bombardment units on the outside of the lake because they have to be further away anyway. South Alabama builds the Statue, Statue of Zeus, which will help their military out. Cajun Field does begin to take damage. Louisiana Lafayette running out of units. App State still with no military besides that horseman. Arkansas State and, Coast, and Coastal Carolina starting to overflow their, their uh, city limits here with units. They just have too many. Cajun Field down to pretty much no health. They need the Swordsman of this Pikeman to capture it. Will they do it? They do. So that is an F in the chat for Louisiana Lafayette. They are the first team eliminated by Georgia State. Now Georgia State has a lot of units left, and they're going to need that because they are going to have a target on their backs for being uh, warmongers this early on in the game. So will we see denouncements? Will we see de declarations of war? I don't know. We'll probably see denouncements. And with how many uh, armies are actually pretty sizable in this game, we could see a war against them. So they need to watch out for like a war between Coastal Carolina and Arkansas State and Louisiana Monroe and Georgia Southern, who has now started to build their military strength because they need to at this point. Um, let's see. Nothing else. Yeah, that was the biggest war. This war is still going on between South Alabama and Troy versus Texas State, but... That Great Wall is going to be such a good deterrent that Texas State's not going to have to worry about it. Hopefully they can make peace soon so they can actually get a military force, though, because right now they're lagging about as far behind as App State in terms of military force. App State does now have a second horseman that I can see, so they're going to build a Temple of Artists. App State's going for Wonders, um, which in this kind of game is not the best move, so we'll see if they switch gears here soon. It's probably going to take an invasion by like Arkansas State or Troy to stop them, but or for them to realize. But at that point, it could be too late. 
They seem to be trading with Arkansas State, so that could be pacifying the Red Wolves, but I don't know. Georgia State is making use of that second city. Their military is pretty much bulked right back up. Georgia Southern is now a pretty formidable force for lagging behind so much. They've been left alone, though, so luckily for them, um, they've had time to build up with no opposition. Uh, South Alabama does have Mish Mishka. Uh, she's inside the walls of Texas State. Troy still making that push, but again, th those walls are so hard to get through. And um, you're, unless you send a large force, you're not going to take a stadium. But Troy's going to give it a shot. They're sending their entire military force, it looks like, towards Bobcat Stadium. So they could do some damage with it, but I don't think they'll capture it. Arkansas or Appalachian State finally starting to get some uh, melee units. They have long swordsmen. They have Yosef. They have a knight, or they have two knights, so Troy's pulled back out of Texas State's territory. I want to see Georgia State and Georgia Southern go to war here, or Coastal Carolina, Arkansas State. A lot of big armies on the map here. We need some, some cullings, <clears throat> if you will. We've seen just these two are actually at a disadvantage now with how long this war against Texas State has been going on. Because they're focusing on a war with Texas State, they're not focusing on expanding and improving themselves. They're focusing on trying to take Texas State out. So they are falling behind other teams. Or they, they probably are. I can't see at the moment. App State with two wonders, a uh, few others with one, everyone else with zero. That's expected. All right, let's keep going and see what happens here. No declarations of war yet. We may be seeing some stalemates just from teams not wanting to go to war yet. Georgia State has that advantage, and they're going to go to war with Troy. That's on the other side of the continent, so I don't know if they'll commit to that fight. But there's Georgia Southern going to war with Troy again, again, on the other side of the continent. But it's a good uh, show that they don't think Troy is very strong militarily. Georgia Southern is going to commit. So Georgia Southern is going to send their units across the map to go after Troy Troy makes peace with Texas State, which is what they really needed to do all along. So good on the two Georgia schools for making them realize that they probably shouldn't be in this long war. If I were Georgia State, I would immediately invade Georgia Southern here while their military is gone. They have a single composite bowman uh, defending Allen E. Paulson Stadium, and you have two cities of, of production advantage. Come on, Panthers. Like you have so many units just ready to go and invade if you want to use it. Or Coastal Carolina. They could do it too. What I'm saying is whoever's next to Georgia Southern should invade right now. Alrighty, so nothing yet. Oh, no, never mind. Georgia Southern's pulling it off. They've destroyed Texas or Troy's military and are bringing Veterans Memorial Stadium down to the red. And there it goes. So Troy has been eliminated from the game. Georgia Southern eliminates the Trojans and takes Veterans Memorial Stadium. And now they have to defend two different sides of the continent at once. Luckily, the continent's smaller, but that's still a big war. And here we go. Here's an immediate repercussion from that. As Louisiana Monroe and Coastal Carolina declare war on them, they send their entire military across the map to go take this city leaving their capital exposed, and now a team with a massive military force right on your borders declares war against you. And just for good measure, Georgia State joins in here too. So we're going to see if Coastal Carolina or the Panthers can get it. The Panthaclears. <laughs> Alan E. Paulson starts taking damage, but not enough. It reheals, but everyone's just getting set up at this point. So it's going to go down. Who's going to take it is the, is the real question here. Georgia State's making that push. They're trying to get poised for a capture, but they don't have any melee units on the front. Coastal Carolina has a Chauncey right there. So <clears throat> uh, Alan E. Paulson brought down to half health. Coastal Carolina will go first in these fights. It's in the red, so this looks like it's going to be Coastal Carolina's to take. If they fail here, Georgia State will get it. Never mind, Georgia State makes peace with Georgia Southern, so they're not going to get it. Coastal Carolina will take it, and Alan E. Paulson goes down to the Chanticleers. They're not out yet. They're still in Veterans Memorial Stadium. But now here's the problem is that is occupied. They just recently captured it. The, the citizens of that city are not used to their government yet. So they are revolting. They're not happy. So 
<clears throat> uh, Georgia Southern is dealing with an unhappy population, which cannot be producing anything at the moment, and at war with both Coastal Carolina and uh, Louisiana Monroe. App State would actually be really good here to declare war on them and take Veterans Memorial Stadium. Use that great uh, great library and two cities and really boost your <clears throat> your production. Here comes Arkansas State. They're on the move now. So they build Chichen Itza and then probably declare war here in the next turn or two and invade themselves. There it is. So there's the declaration of war between Arkansas State and Georgia Southern. Uh, the Falcons or the Eagles do decide to make peace with... Um, it, 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 yeah, the Eagles decide to make peace with Coastal Carolina and Louisiana Monroe because it's just not worth it to go across the map to do that like they learned. <clears throat> and now Arkansas State, who it's not really across the map. They're close. Like they are taking veterans is easier because then it's just getting around App State and they can do that. If they want to, they can go to war with App State and take Kid Brewer as well. And um, that would be the easier route. Down in the south, Georgia State declares war against Coastal Carolina. They waited until the Chanticleers used most of their military in taking Allen E. Paulson before invading. And now they're going to do an invasion of their own. So Veterans Memorial Stadium down to about half health with Arkansas State showing no signs of, of backing off down to the red now as the battle rages on down here in the south. All right, so there we go. Veterans Memorial Stadium has been captured by Arkansas State. That is going to be an F in the chat for... Uh, Georgia Southern, and now Arkansas State is separating, or not separating, sorry, enveloping Appalachian State, or Appalachian State, however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> and uh, Georgia Southern seems to be winning this war against Coastal Carolina, but do they have enough to actually take any cities in it? So they have that extra city of production. They've had it for longer. Both teams do have two cities now. But uh, they, they had the longer production. So Alan E. Paulson is down to the yellow. Now down to no health. They have to get this pikeman in here. They should be able to do that. And there it goes. So they take Alan E. Paulson Stadium. South Alabama and Texas State finally make a peace agreement. That has been really bad for South Alabama. Like Texas State was already in trouble. They were already behind. But now look at Louisiana Monroe compared to South Alabama. Because every unit South Alabama makes gets thrown into this war machine. And that's bad. Like, their military needs time to catch up. And if Louisiana Monroe is smart, they would invade right now while they're already weakened. So is Georgia State going to continue pushing and try to take Brooks Stadium as well? We will see. Arkansas State gets that Pantheon that gives them ranged combat strength, so it's going to be harder to invade them. But it would have been better if Texas State managed to get that. But they didn't, so it's whatever. So now Arkansas State needs to worry about, they look like they're trying to be aggressive and going towards uh, Coastal Carolina, who has no military at the moment. It'd be a good attack by Arkansas State, but do you want to push your hand that early and get that much of a warmonger penalty against you? I would say yes, just because if you don't, Georgia State easily could. And um, if Georgia State gets to four cities, things are going to get really bad really fast. So people that like to smile the most, it looks like App State and Louisiana Monroe are the happiest. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, the teams that are going to be at war are going to be less happy. Louisiana Monroe is thinking about what they're going to do. Texas State's just kind of, they're in such little land. They got boxed in here by South Alabama and, uh, well, Troy, now Arkansas State, that they don't really have much room to expand. Uh, we saw that declaration of war against Georgia State. Here comes Louisiana Monroe, and that's going to be bad for Georgia State here. They're going to have an invasion by... Um, by the Warhawks, uh, Texas State's going to join in there. They're not going to be able to get out of their territory to really do much, I don't think. They also have Bubble Guy. Texas State has their Bubble Guy now as a unique unit. So uh, Louisiana Monroe could easily take Cajun Field. I don't know if they're going to be able to get all the way up to Georgia State Stadium, but they could. Texas State is going to actually send their full force out. They're really bold about that, so... Cajun Field is already down to about half health. They'll probably take that before Texas State even gets close. So no worries about sniping it there. Down to no health. They just have to get one of these pikemen into the area. And they don't yet, but they're, he's right there and he's at full health. So, all right. So Louisiana Monroe takes Cajun Field. Texas State shows up just in time to distract the Georgia State military, giving Louisiana Monroe enough time to regroup and maybe take on Georgia State Stadium. Up in the north, Arkansas State declares war on Coastal Carolina, and they have their full forces grouped up against Brooks Stadium, so they are going to 
uh, make that push and try to capture and eliminate Coastal Carolina. All right, so Louisiana and Monroe is going to pull back. Texas State's going to go all in on Georgia, St uh, Georgia State for right now, but I don't think they have enough units to capture it. And if they do, they're so far away from it that it's going to be really difficult. All right, so Coastal Carolina's military is defeated. Uh, now Arkansas State is surrounding the stadium, and they should start damaging it. There it goes. It's starting to take damage. Will they have enough units? It looks like they do to capture it. It's a lot of crossbowmen and pikemen, which are okay at this point. It would... It'd be better if they had a trebuchet or a catapult, but they don't need it. They capture Brooks Stadium and they eliminate Coastal Carolina. So that is an F in the chat for Coastal Carolina. But no actions come without consequence because Georgia State, Texas State, and South Alabama all make or all declare war on the Red Wolves immediately. But I think they're okay with that because none of those teams really have the war effort or reserves left to fight them. I'd be more worried if Appalachian State or Appalachian State joins in and declares war against them as well because the, the Mountaineers are just right on the borders of both Centennial Bank and Veterans Memorial Stadium, which are wide open. And there it goes. So Appalachian State, Appalachian State, however you want to pronounce it, I'll just keep saying both, <laughs> declares war against the Red Wolves and goes after War Memorial Stadium and Centennial Bank at the same time. Now you see Texas State abandoning Georgia State and moving up north. Arkansas State making that push for Allen E. Paulson. They're actually doing a pretty decent job, but they're going to have to pull back quickly as Veterans Memorial Stadium is captured by Appalachian State with ease, like no effort whatsoever. And now the Mountaineers are going to move on to Centennial Bank, bringing it down to the yellow. The uh, Mountaineers were just waiting for this time. Like they, they were slow and they were methodical and they now have Centennial Bank Stadium, so which, which is Arkansas State's original capital. So that's a huge uh, gain for the Mountaineers. They can quickly move on to Brook Stadium if they want to. And because it's a warmonger uh, fight, they're probably not going to get the same kind of bo or same kind of penalties that Arkansas State did with their aggressive expansions. Brook Stadium immediately down to half health. Appalachian State just moved with deadly force. Yosef is coming in here. He's going to capture the city. And, Ap and Arkansas State has been eliminated from the game just like that. That is an F in the chat for Arkansas State. And App State made moves. They now control four cities just in like one or two turns. Or not, it was like five turns, but it was still that quickly from being quiet and controlled and contained to now owning almost half the map. So that is a really, really good move by App State. They can now use that great library and build their science up to crazy high levels. If they want to, they can try to go after Alan E. Paulson if they're feeling really, really bold. Um, I see George, or South Alabama on the move. Let's see if, Let's see where the wars are standing at right now. So... South Alabama and ULM still at war with Georgia State. Um, App State didn't, has open borders with South Alabama. And South Alabama has open borders with ULM, which is really important in this war with Georgia State. Uh, ULM has, has gone back to regroup, and now they probably are ready to go take on Georgia State Stadium. I can see App State. What they need to do is go after jo Alan E. Paulson. Don't go after Texas State. That's the wrong move if you're App State. Uh, it looks like South Alabama is going to go for Allen E. Paulson. They're not going to go for Georgia State. That's a good move. It's the weaker of the two cities. It'll be easier to capture. Use it as a springboard to get to Georgia State Stadium later on in the war. Let Louisiana Monroe keep the unit count down while you take the city and rebuild yourself. So Allen E. Paulson begins to take damage. <clears throat> Georgia State now does have pounce. So that'll help them out a little bit. App, uh, App State does build the Parthenon. They really love their wonders. So... And Georgia State manages to hold them off. And now they're grouping up and moving in as Louisiana Monroe is starting their push for Georgia State Stadium. Excuse me. So App State's in a good position where they could probably start throwing their weight around. If they want to go to war with Georgia, excuse me, Georgia State, that would be good. I'm really nervous. They seem to be grouping up on the side of Texas State, which is a bad idea with that great wall. I would save Texas State towards last or second to last. <clears throat> Louisiana, so everyone seemed, everyone I think is at peace right now. Yeah, everyone's at peace. No wars yet. So now is the time of rebuilding. Louisiana Monroe starts getting a Pantheon, giving them faith from Tundra without forest, which is all these mountain tiles here are Tundra. So <clears throat> that helps them a little bit. But um, yeah, if I were everyone, I'd be worried about App State. Everyone here has either one or two cities. App State has four. So twice the amount of cities is the next team behind them. And you can already see the production benefits from that as their military is starting to get huge. 
If I were App State, get their, get, they're gathering up. So we can see them moving and thinking about doing something. I would go after Georgia State right now before the uh, Panthers have a chance to move. They're on the move now, so expect that war declaration soon. They get their own Pantheon, getting them food for each banana, citrus, and wheat. There's tons of wheat resources, as you can see, that they have. So they get a lot of food from that. That'll help their starving militaries, and they can build even bigger militaries from that. They're on that move. Here comes the war between App State and Georgia State. And if this goes well for the Mountaineers, they're going to control easily half the board, more than half the board. Um, if they can take Allen E. Paulson, they can use that as a great springboard to get to Georgia State Stadium with little to no resistance. Um, Allen E. Paulson begins to take damage. App State just ignoring all attempts by Georgia State to stop them. All right, so Allen E. Paulson starting to take damage here. Georgia State's military has been depleted, so App State can ignore the rest of their little attempts to stop them now. Allen E. Paulson brought down to the red, and there it goes. So they take Allen E. Paulson. They now control half the cities in the game. If they want to continue this war effort, they can go for Georgia State Stadium. They have to be worried about warmonger penalties here, so I would be cautious if you want to take Georgia State. You already own half the cities in the map. I would take time, make peace, rebuild, maybe let some of these teams over here on the west side fight it out with each other and spend their military strength before you um, take on weakened cities. You're okay, though, because Louisiana Monroe is going to declare war against Georgia State anyway, so Texas State's going to join in, too. They sense the weakness in the water. App State makes peace, which is the smart move, so they can rebuild their military strength as Louisiana Monroe is going to walk in here and, and take Georgia State Stadium. South Alabama joins in on the fight. They're going to kick them while they're down. Uh, Texas State finds Catholicism as Louisiana Monroe moves in for the kill here. And this is what I'm saying. If you're App State, <clears throat> well, one, you land bomb them so that Louisiana Monroe gets less land. Um, two, you let Louisiana Monroe use most of their military strength to get Georgia State Stadium while you're building up pretty good reserves here in the back. Once they finish that war, they're weak, they're tired, they're worn out. That's when you invade. So if I were, if I were um, South Alabama, now is the time to go after Malone Stadium. You have a massive military. You can easily take the stadium while, while they're distracted. Uh, Texas State, now would be a good time to try and take Veterans Memorial Stadium before App State can get back to full strength. So everyone has their moves and their strategies they could be doing right now, but none of them seem to be doing it yet. But Louisiana Monroe pulls through, and they do capture Georgia State Stadium, so that is an F for Georgia State. They managed to get pretty good expansion in the beginning, but then those warmonger penalties piled on top of them, and they crumbled. <clears throat> also, the explosion of App State really didn't help, so... That is an F in the chat for Georgia State, and we are down to four. Just like that, as, almost as quick as it started, we're down to four. <clears throat> so now Arkansas, or not Arkansas, sorry, um, App State and Louisiana Monroe are going to have a huge advantage militarily over Texas State and South Alabama. Texas State's best bet <clears throat> is to um, just turtle, just to sit inside of their walls and not really cause any commotion. Um, we did see App State built Notre Dame and they are grouping up here in the north here. So we may be seeing a war against App State and Texas State very soon. Louisiana Monroe founds Buddhism <clears throat> and App State is preparing for that war. Here comes the invasion force. They're in Texas State's borders. There we go. There's that declaration of war from App State to Texas State. Can they be the first team to really break through the Great Wall this early in the game and take a strategically placed city? It looks like they're not going to be doing a great job off the bat, but that's also because their Texas State was pretty much full on military units. So you got to weaken that military. You got to get through it before the city lies open and undefended. <clears throat> Louisiana Monroe is going to take advantage and declare war against South Alabama. So we're going to see the map try to be consolidated to just the final two teams here. If they can do it. Louisiana Monroe has a good shot at South Alabama. If App State wants to join this war too and maybe snipe it from them, they could. But App State seems pretty content trying to take on Texas State right now. The Bobcats have no military left. App State has a lot of military units left. So once they can get through that wall quickly, they can start doing damage to that city. But it's, it's going to be hard. They have two tiles basically to enter the city. Because South Alabama is blocking the rest of the way. So Louisiana Monroe makes peace with South Alabama. They wasted a lot of their military in doing so. 
<clears throat> we could see App State turning the turning the tide here, declaring war on either of them and trying to invade there. Or they're going to keep getting stuck up and trying to go into Texas State's territory. They have a lot more military than everyone else. Texas State down to pretty much no military whatsoever. Just a single bubble guy in Trebuchet. <clears throat> so here comes that push by App State. They got units inside Texas State's borders. But will they keep them there and start damaging the city with them? There's a cannon in there. That's important. No damage to the city yet. Just kind of luring out any last last um, fighters of Texas State. There goes damage to the city. They have Yosef, who is, I don't remember exactly what great unit he is. But um, <clears throat> he is a great unit, which help, um, which will help them. So they're kind of occupying Texas State, not attacking Texas State at the moment, which is not good for them. All right, so yeah, they're really committing to this war, but they, there's just such little land for them to move and manipulate. It's hard to get in there and attack. So they got to be careful here. They don't want to waste all their units and let Louisiana Monroe and South Alabama grow and expand militarily to where if Louisiana Monroe wanted to, they can move over here with their whole army <clears throat> and take Allen E. Paulson Stadium with relative ease. So if I were App State, I would consider this a victory of eliminating Texas State's army. Like, you didn't really win the war, but you did a solid effort of making sure Texas State stays irrelevant. And you're not going to take that city without a really, really dedicated push. But with two cannons and Yosef's, you might. They're committing to actually damaging the city now. They got it down to the yellow. <clears throat> Will they keep the pressure on it? I doubt it, but Texas State down to just a single trebuchet. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do this. It'd be best if you can take South Alabama and come in from the bottom, but what do I know? <laughs> yeah, with this, they're just giving Louisiana Monroe time to to rebuild and grow and become a threat, so... I think this is the wrong move by App State. They're getting hung up on this. And they need to just realize it's not going to happen right now. And they need to come back later when they own Hancock Whitney. Because, I mean, if you look, App State's... I mean, they're technologically ahead. They already have Gatling guns. But <clears throat> they... Um, yeah, they're just... They're, their military's empty. There you go. South Alabama's going to declare war against App State. Louisiana Monroe is going to declare war against App State. So App State's insistence on taking Texas A&M is going to come back and bite them. As South Alabama is going for Veterans Memorial Stadium, Louisiana Monroe going straight for Allen E. Paulson. Both teams have plenty of units to take it. And um, they're going to knock App State back a peck or two. So luckily App State's ahead mili or, um, technologically, so that could give them a boost. And look at that. they just A, a military appeared out of nowhere around Allen Paulson. And our, and um, sorry, South Alabama's hesitance to go after Veterans Memorial Stadium, they're retreating back into their territory. So App State may have gotten really lucky here that uh, South Alabama does not want to commit. Uh, they do found autocracy, and they're holding back Louisiana Monroe's push. But it's I don't know if it's enough yet. Let's, let's, let's find out. Like, Louisiana Monroe is not pushing as hard as they need to against Allen E. Paulson. And you can see App State starting to rebuild up here. They use their mo their money, their, their excuse me, their production and um, resources to just get a military appearing like nothing out of the blue almost. There's the declaration of peace between South Alabama and App State. So, and there we go. So there's Louisiana Monroe's peace deal. So that's going to be 10 turns of peace between App State and those two. They're free to focus back on Texas State, who I think they made peace with in that initial double war. Nope, they're still at war. Never mind. So hopefully App State doesn't just go right back to being at war with Texas State again. Hopefully they can take time to, to uh, regroup, make peace, and maybe make a, a real push against um, Louisiana Monroe or South Alabama. Texas State has rebuilt their military inside their borders, so it's not worth going in there and reusing your military to take them out again.
Like, let Texas State be. They're not hurting anybody. They can't even leave. They're literally blocked in into their little territory. They can't expand this way. South Alabama and Veterans Memorial Stadium's um, land bomb right there blocked them off. So make peace because they're going to keep invading you like this and just siphoning units away from you. And and it looks like Louisiana Monroe is not giving up. They're, they just wanted to uh, time to rebuild, maybe re-strategize. App State's military is mostly in the north by Texas State, so Louisiana Monroe can quickly invade again and hopefully this time not give up at the slightest, slightest hints of conflict. All right, so App State does land bomb Louisiana State or Louisiana Monroe all the way back. App State now pretty much controls Georgia State Stadium. There's one tile of Louisiana Monroe's. They separated this little island of territory up here. <clears throat> so if App State can get another land bomb over here, Georgia State Stadium is entirely enveloped by App State's territory. And just look at the size of this military up here. I mean, if they don't waste that on Texas State, that can come down and swing the hammer hard against a team like uh, South Alabama. Like a piece with Texas State would really help App State out right now. They seem to be moving towards Texas State, so they want that invasion again. They're really trying for that second invasion. But you've just pissed off Louisiana Monroe by triple land bombing them, so... <laughs> I don't know if that's the best move here to, to keep trying to take this little city that you can't get. At the very least, they should hope that South Alabama joins them and, and takes out Texas State's army, letting you come in and, and seize the city, but they're not going to get there. So the Texas State's military is destroyed again. Bobcat Stadium's taking some damage, but not enough, and it's not consistent enough to actually fall. It's healing before they can even get the next group of units through this two-tile pass. And App State's military is actually now accruing down here on the south on Louisiana Monroe's side, so they could be planning an invasion of Georgia State Stadium very soon. A technology boost, they now have great war infantry to everyone else's riflemen or musketmen. So they're solidly ahead technologically, which is, what, like I said earlier, with the Great Library. Texas State does have an amazing defense. They're doing really, really good right now. And that just comes down to they have that, that Great Wall. That Great Wall has been amazing for them. They are finally starting to crack a little bit. Will it be enough to... Oh, they are defending the Alamo. They are. They are. And um... yeah, I think they are there, aren't they? And are they in... Um... Whatchamacallit? Uh, uh, I keep wanting to say Houston. It's definitely not. It's San Antonio. Are they in San Antonio? I don't... San Marcos. Okay, so they're close. Um, all right, so Bobcat Stadium is down to the red. They have melee units in the area. This could be the end of Texas State right here. This great war infantry can take it if he wants to move. He's not moving. This cavalry may have to do it. Nope. It's up to that great war infantry. Come on. Just move. Why are you not moving? How's this looking over here? Yeah, it's looking like a, a confront, confrontational war front. So if they take Bobcat Stadium, I mean, that's just a huge burden off their shoulders. There we go. So App State takes Bobcat Stadium. Texas State's defense held stoutly until the very end. But unfortunately, just the sheer wave of numbers of App State units sent their way is not enough. So that is an F in the chat for Texas State. They have been eliminated coming in fourth place. Uh, which is not bad for like for a great wall like i said the great wall usually guarantees you a fourth place finisher or, or better so very good for them now app state's finally free to focus on other things if i were them i would go after south alabama first and then louisiana monroe just because south alabama has actually i would probably do it the other way around take georgia state since you're literally surrounding it as it is with with territory and then go after the one city team who it's really hard to rebuild so Go after Louisiana Monroe, see if you can take a city or two of theirs, bring their production back down to unsustainable levels, and then go after Louisiana or South Alabama. 
Just look at how quickly this military is just appearing out of nowhere for App State. They're building them so fast. They have planes. They have uh, great war infantry. So as soon as they declare war against anyone, it's going to be App State's game to lose here. But it's just a matter of when. Louisiana Monroe and 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 South Alabama are just kind of hoping that they can form a defense, but if they work together, they may be able to distract them enough, but the military um, te technological differences alone are going to be a lot to overcome. So the Great Library was a great move in the beginning. They almost... <clears throat> they benefited from having the Great Library first, like I had said. And then not having a military could have easily wiped them out. That was a gamble. Because if Arkansas State had decided to turn north instead of south and go after App State instead of Coastal Carolina or Troy, App State would have been destroyed. And this would probably be Arkansas State or whoever took them out in this position. So App State played their cards right. Luckily for them, everyone kind of forgot they were there, didn't pay attention to them, and then struck as soon as Arkansas State uh, uh, pushed themselves a little bit too, too thin. And then we saw them go from just here to three, then to four, to five cities, like nothing. So that's just how crazy quick this game can change. South Alabama has adopted order. We are going to go to turn 850 before we force a war between these three. I could see it happening before then, so we'll give them that safe buffer of 850 before Appalachian State just goes buck wild here and ends the game, most likely. Was that another land bomb? No, it was not. Okay. So there is Louisiana Monroe adopting autocracy. Everyone has their own ideologies. And App State is thinking about what they want to do, where they want to place their units. They're already on infantry. Whereas everyone else is still on riflemen. So they're two or three above. Like, let's take a look real quick at where we're at in terms of in terms of technologies. It's just and I mean, here's the science output, not the technologies research, but just the sheer number amount of science you use to, to get technologies. App State is miles ahead of everybody else. And then, and then the actual technologies themselves, App State is just pulling away even further and further. So App State's here, Louisiana Monroe and, um, nope, that's the other one. And South Alabama are pretty much neck and neck, but App State is so far ahead of everybody else technologically and that's that great library and owning most of the map alrighty so cities we all like to visit it's not important for this game that's all culture which is that's really only for the culture victory which is turned off so all right, we are in the atomic era now, so we can probably see nukes being prepared soon. I don't think we're going to get to it. We have less than 100 turns until All Out War, and this game is pretty much over. So <clears throat> let's keep going. That is the good question. Will my voice make it? It's already faltering, which is why I decided to do the finals tomorrow. Is I was already kind of low, raspy voice before even starting the SEC. And I knew I was not going to last that long. So it's finally dying out here. So I think we're going to end pretty much my voice will give out right as the end of this game is over. So we're going to keep going. I'm, I'm talking less and less, so I apologize. It's probably not as exciting commentarily, but... It's definitely helping me continue the conversation as we need it, so. All right. App State seems to be gearing up in the north here, preparing for that war with southern or South Alabama. They do have the ability to build nukes. They're gearing up. Here we go. Will there be a war effort right now? They can quickly just push straight down through this. I mean, they're so far ahead of everybody else. It's just like a hot knife through butter. I mean, just look at how ahead they are. It's nuts. All right, so 
The uranium deposits are somewhere close to the middle, so I don't know if we're gonna let if they're gonna get there. Um, I don't know if they ever even have the ability to get that far in, so we may not see nukes. I don't know, remember if they're in the middle or if they're in the four corners like the SEC was still. I think we're at the point now. I mean, they're just so far above and beyond that we can just force war here at turn 800. I don't even think we need to wait 50 turns. This is pretty much over. So let, at the expense of my voice and everyone's evenings... Let's just, let's just end this thing. So App State is going to declare war against everybody. And I'm not even going to, I'm going to be, it's going to be, I don't usually, it's usually all out war if I do this, but I want to see App State versus both of them combined and let them both defend themselves and not try to fight each other too and give App State even more of an advantage. Let's just see. There goes Georgia State Stadium. Louisiana Monroe is going to fight them for it, but... They're going to lose that fight pretty quickly. So there goes Georgia State with the land ship. And it's just no contest. They're not going to get that one back. So South Alabama's military is pretty much defeated. Here is a second group just waiting in the wings. Like they don't even have to move in yet. Uh, Louisiana and Monroe are trying desperately to get Georgia State Stadium back. But getting pushed back. Louisiana Monroe's military is pretty much defeated. They do take Georgia State Stadium back, though. But they were just... App State was keeping people back, waiting until they needed them, and now they need them to take it a third time. So... They're holding out, but it's a war of attrition at this point, and App State's going to win that one. There goes Georgia State Stadium a third time. Unfortunately, we can't raise cities because they're all capitals, so... There are five bombers stationed in Allen E. Paulson. Those are going to come in handy if they need them. Here's just a line of artillery cannons. There's a tank going for Hancock Whitney. So Cajun Fields already captured in two turns. Louisiana Monroe is running out of units. They're out of units. And um, just two planes and a artillery left in Malone Stadium. And here comes the army down from the top towards Hancock Whitney Stadium. It's already down to, down to the yellow. Uh, Louisiana Monroe does manage to take that Cajun field. And look at that. South Alabama actually has quite a bit of money. App State's in second, and it's a long way down from South Alabama, but it doesn't matter. They got all of it now anyway. That is an F in the chat for South Alabama as Appalachian State takes Hancock-Whitney Stadium and can focus strictly on Malone Stadium to win this final game out. And this just shows they were so far ahead technologically that there was no way that either team could come back and get it. So Malone Stadium is now post Malone Stadium, and that is going to be the end of the Sun Belt. Congratulations to Appalachian or Appalachian, whichever you prefer, State, for winning the Sun Belt. They are going to be joining the East. Let's pull up the list, and I will get you guys all the finals, which is going to happen tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My voice will be back as well as it can be, <laughs> at least somewhat rested enough to do it. And um, let's see here. So the winners, they are going to be joining. Um, who won the SEC? It was South Carolina. Right? Yeah, South Carolina. And um, Appalachian State. Oh, no, sorry. You're right. It was Mississippi State. It was the other red team. You're right. Sorry, guys. It was Mississippi State. Okay, so the winners of each conference. In the American, we have East Carolina. In the ACC, we have Syracuse. In the Big Ten, we have Michigan State. In the Big 12, we have Texas. In the Conference USA, we have Rice. In the Independence, we have Notre Dame. In the MAC, we have Akron. In the Mountain West, we have Nevada. In the Big or in the Pac-12, we have Utah. In the SEC, we have Mississippi State. And in the Sun Belt, we have Appalachian State. So <laughs> I know it was Mississippi State. I'm sorry. I got it wrong. Um, but yeah, so that is the finals. It will be happening at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, I hope to see you all there. Thank you so much for watching this. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow to finish thing this thing out. So thank you guys. Have a great night. Stay safe. Hope you guys are all doing well through all of this crazy, crazy stuff that's happening. And um, we got we will make it through it. So 
See you guys tomorrow. Have a great night. Have a great day tomorrow and see you guys soon.